Here we have a jellyfish and seahorse by Hexbug, part of the Aquabot Smartfish technology range, new for 2015. In this video I'm going to have these guys swimming and diving in a bowl and we're going to talk about all the features and see how they work. A quick couple of points about the packaging because it's so good. The bases of both the jellyfish and seahorse look like the sea bottom which I think are great. I'm going to try to use these later in the video. They also both bobble around inside the packaging because they're kind of suspended on both on kind of hangers and hooks, which I think is also great indeed. Be extra careful with the jellyfish because on the bottom, not only are you going to get stung, you've actually got three free batteries. So the jellyfish needs three LR44s, the seahorse needs two, and although the jellyfish comes with three batteries, and it all depends on the packaging, you might not always get spare batteries, so you might want to make sure you've got a couple of LR44 batteries, just the small little button cell ones. Okay, first up, the jellyfish. Now, as you can see, I've selected the pink one, but there are actually five colours, different jellyfish and different seahorse. And as you can imagine, it's hex bug, so the, he the jellyfish's head is hexagonal. It's also got six groups of tentacles and tendrils that are really rubbery and they bouncy and they boing all over the place and they're really kind of light and fluffy to touch. And I'm sure that uh, you've got to be a little bit careful of these, but they are fantastic in the water. Watch this thing swim. So as you can see, they're kind of splayed out as I dropped it down. Now it didn't sink by its weight. It sunk because when it comes on and touches water, the motors fire up and it comes alive. You can already see a kind of pink light in its head. And we'll turn the lights off a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. So a little bit dim, you can see a pink light in their main jellyfish head just here. And it's got a motor in it and it's very quiet, completely different to the kind of flapping that you normally associate with the Aquabot fish range. This one's got a motor that fans it down, it propels it down. So the unit is off, so it's actually gone to sleep, or the batteries are flat, it floats to the top, so it's buoyant. So by default it will be at the top of the water, but it can sink under its own control and spin. Now there's a spin, there's a really good spin, and when it's spinning and going down, the tentacles and tendrils are really fantastic. So as you can see, they can spin out and open up, which I think is a really quite nice feature. Very, very different to the kind of normal swimming motion that you normally get. So same again, take it out of the water, quite quickly realizes it's out of water and turns itself off. It will also turn itself off after five minutes of inactivity. So if I just leave him in there, whilst I talk about and introduce the seahorse, he might well turn off and stop and have a little look and wait for us to uh, nudge, knock the bowl to wake him up or to nudge him. Okay, the seahorse. Now the seahorse really does immediately make me think with its back fin. Oh, and I've got wet fingers and hands. So of course the contact points on the side, I'm making a circuit and you can see already it's got a lovely little light and it's flashing away. Very, very kind of similar technology and idea to the fish. So let's drop him in and he's already flapping away quite merrily. So that's the normal clatter clatter that you hear if you've got a plastic wall bowl like I have here. And you'll notice that the seahorse has different frequency of beats. So it's rear back fin, can't call it tail fin anymore, will beat both slowly and or fast depending on whether it wants to have a sedate bob along or whether it wants to go for a little dive. Now the jellyfish is all about the dive, the dive and the spin. Now the seahorse, very much more like the aqua fish. Now I'm gonna tap the bubbles off because I know he's not having so much fun sinking. There he is, he's actually gone down now. Now those bubbles and that tap is just a technique that I've talked about a few times in my videos because if you don't, you risk having a little bit of dust or small, very small bubbles that you can't really see that just affects the buoyancy of the fish and all the seahorse and it stops it being able to float so well. Now it will, it will bobble up to the bob up to the, the top again, and it all depends on what beat phase it's doing. Now it's got a spring, springy, rubbery, bouncy bottom tail, and so I guess this is a little bit more typical for a seahorse, where it kind of drags along and bounces around on the bottom of the seabed. So it's a very different characteristic. These aren't Aquabot Hexbug, Aquabot Two fish. These have got the same technology, they've still got the same lights, and I really like the way the light in the uh, seahorse goes along the body. So I've deliberately picked an orange one. Again, five colors for the seahorse, five colors for the jellyfish. Beautiful print design on the side of the seahorse. It's got a really nice blue patination going on here, but you can still see through and you can see all the mechanics. They're headbutting each other 
Jellyfish, out of the way. Poor seahorse doesn't know what to do. It's caught in the tendrils now. I think they're friends, so I don't think that jellyfish is going to sting that seahorse. But uh, you can decide whether that does or doesn't happen if you want to have a play idea. So very, very different in style, very, very different in technique. The seahorse, I'm just going to pull him out again to show him that he's got the same effect. So when he's out of the water, quite quickly he stops flapping and uh, becomes uh, inert, turns himself off as it were, and I can shake him dry, pop him on the side. Now, the these two fish, the jellyfish and the seahorse, have actually got included weights so that you can affect and play with the buoyancy straight away out of the packaging. So I might, for example, although the seahorse at the beginning was a little bit too floaty because he had too many air bubbles, now I've knocked all the air bubbles off. He seems to be a little bit too on the bottom of the water. So what I can do is I can a little bit, in a little bit of time, I'm gonna just adjust his buoyancy because what I want is him actually bouncing along on the bottom there. So I like the idea of when I drop him and he bounces in the bottom and that rubber tail, I want him to be able to spring around a little bit more, but he's not coming up a great deal. So I'm gonna remove one of the weights that's in his battery compartment and I'm gonna pop him back in. Now in the time it took me to remove the weights out of my seahorse's battery compartment, the jellyfish has timed out, so that's been a good five minutes play. Now, what I'm going to do before I pop the, the uh, seahorse in is I want to wake up the jellyfish. So I can knock. It's a good firm knock on the side of the tank. And as you can see, he's woken up. Now, that battery saving feature, I think, is fantastic because it's great when you're playing and they interact with each other. But what you don't want to do is just to leave these guys swimming and go flat and you fall asleep at night if you use it like an aquarium, a modern day aquarium where no fish or jellyfish or seahorses get harmed. Now, as you can see, when he's not flapping his back fin very hard, he's now up on the surface. Now let's see what happens when he flaps that a little bit harder. Come on, guy, I want you to go for a race. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll do it just as he comes around to the front of the uh, tank again. In the meantime, we have to keep an eye on the jellyfish, hopefully not in the way doing its dance and spin. Come on, seals, now, now would be good. Down you go, down you go. Okay, so he's now, now in the kind of full on mode. And if the jellyfish wasn't in the way, is he going down, is he going down? Not quite, now I saw him go down earlier, so I know it's bubbles. <laughs> so although I've just done a lot of, I've really given him a, a talking to now. Um, I know I've already, because uh, I tested this before I came back on camera, I know I've got the buoyancy right. So when he's on his fast beat like this, he's underwater and his tail's doing just what I wanted it to do, which is to bob along the bottom, making him bob, which I think is what the uh, seahorse's idea is about. But when he's not doing that full throttle swim, he's more buoyant, not because so, he's of course nose heavy, wants to go down and dive. And when he's not doing such a hard swim, he's now floating. So I think great kind of feature. I'm going to turn the lights off again so you can see the seahorse in the dark. So I'm not turning the lights off completely, but you can now see at the moment the jellyfish is hogging the line light. So I'm going to gently nudge the jellyfish out of the way a bit just so the seahorse can do a nice round. So as you can see in the chest of the jelly on the seahorse, sorry, it's a really nice orange glow which is a really good contrast to the pink of the jellyfish, which, because I pushed it at the back, is now in the way. Now the seahorse can push it out of the way, but at the back of the bowl, because of the uh, reflection of the light, refraction of the light, sorry, you can't see it too clear. So here goes the seahorse, without my tapping, or any extra tapping, as you can see, it's going down nice and gently, just how I wanted it. He, of course, would go deep if my tank was deeper. I'm gonna turn the light on quickly. But as you can see, ah, oh, you can almost see that, the tail goes on the bottom and it kind of drags and bounces and that's a really beautiful rubbery springy tail. Let me just show you his tail. It's a really beautifully springy tail. So I think this bobbing along at the bottom of the beautiful briny sea, as long as he's got no bubbles in him, is exactly what you can do with the seahorse. So you really got some very, very fine control. This is one of the little rubber weights that's inside the tail. There's about four large weights, I've just dropped it in the water, it's just sunk, there it goes. They're like miniature white clear ice cubes. So if you see this kind of little white ice cube, I'm dropping them all in the water, there we go. That's exactly what you get. And you also get half weights, which are skinny, flatter, like pizza boxes, miniature pizza boxes for very, very small fish under the sea. So these weights allow you to completely tweak 
the buoyancy. So what I had to do with the seahorse, so I'm really happy with the jellyfish, he's absolutely fine with all three weights in, but with the seahorse, I had to remove four large weights and one half weight. So inside there now is just one half weight, and for me, that's the buoyancy I want, where I've got this kind of really nice kind of seahorse effect. <laughs> I guess that's what I really wanted. So brilliant little devices, great cute toys, they're fascinating to watch. I wonder what my great grey shark's gonna make of them. I, I'm sure I'm gonna have these guys in the fish bowl with other hex bug, aquabot, and robo fish, fish swimming around. And just to end, what did I do with the base of the jellyfish box? Here it is on my left. Now, of course, the uh, little kind of style of this is a lot of hexagonals. Now what I've done is I've cut the very tops of two of the flutes just so that the air very easily can get out of this. It does then sink under its own natural weight. I've just pushed it down. But as you can see, you quite, quite quickly, by utilizing the packaging that you get with these jellyfish and the seahorse, they've got the same kind of idea, different colors. You can really make a nice aquatic diorama, which I think is really fantastic. So great extra value. Brilliant job, Hexbug. Again, fantastic gadgets as always. I love the fact you can see the technology. This jellyfish, really clever. The actual fact that you've got now a kind of like it's almost like a kind of submarine spinning propeller hidden within there. And you know, an inquisitive kid's going to want to see how that works. And that's really clever. Spins, buoyant, it's got a lot of control. I can see Hexbug next year bringing out some even more advanced, fantastic waterborne creatures. This tank doesn't come included. This isn't actually on the Hexbug tanks. This is just sold as a fish bowl. Um, but I think, you know, the Hexbug range include already the Great Shark tank and the larger Harbour piece. So you can actually get some really nice sizable uh, bowls for these uh, aquatic toys to play in. The only thing I'll say about the jellyfish, I think height is quite you know, I think you really introduce height a great deal more. So the taller the tank you've got, the better. So that's my only tip, I guess. Get a nice tall tank for your jellyfish so you can bob along on the bottom, spinning, showing off its really long pink tendrils in this case, and the seahorse having its fun, doing its thing. And at the moment, there's no shark in there, but I know I'm gonna see what happens with a great gray shark and see whether he likes a tasty treat. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and comment.